Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Hopefully all of you would be fine. Now, welcome to the course Wireless Communication Technique and today's topic is Channel Equalization in Wireless Communication. I am Dr. Zishan Kaleem from EC Department CUI WA Campus. Okay, let's move to the lecture contents. In this lecture, we will cover equalization in general and specifically, we will discuss the types of equalization and there are two types of equalization. One is called a linear and the other is called nonlinear. So we will discuss one by one. So let's move on to the topic. First of all, I would like to introduce why we need in equalization and what's the importance of the equalization in the mobile communication or the wireless communication as you know that the properties of the mobile radio channel changes with respect to time for example there are there is a multipath fading multipath fading means one if you have a one base station here and you have a receiver here so the data transmitted will reflect and come here and there will be one line of sight communication and there can be another path which is non line of sight so same data for example d1 will receive from three different paths to the receiver this is your receiver and this is your transmitter so from transmitter, in this case transmitter can be a mobile pay station and this is your mobile or cell, or cell phone. So when uh, the transmitted data reaches from multiple paths to the receiver, then this is called a uh, multipath channel. And the, this channel results in the fading, like the channel quality, the received data quality will be fade out. So it's called the multipath fading. And it results due to time dispersion. Time dispersion means that from different uh, time paths, different paths, it will come in with different, reach the receiver at the different time slots. So due to time dispersion, there is a inter-symbol interference. What does it mean? Like this is your first data, which is coming from different paths, and it is reaches the receiver at different time slots. So this results uh, in the interference with other symbols. For example, this is D1, your first symbol, and D2 would be your different second symbol. So D1 symbol with uh, interfere with the D2 symbol, which comes next after D1. So another uh, effect of the uh, radio channel is their Doppler spread. Doppler spread, when you move, either transmitter move, or either receiver moves it results in a fluctuation in a channel so these effects have a strong negative impact on the bit error rate of any modulation scheme so mobile communication systems require signal processing techniques that improve the link performance in hostile mobile radio environments so there are three popular techniques which are used to overcome the effect of the inter symbol interference right which is the major limiting factor in the mobile communication. So first of first scheme is the equalization. What does it mean? It compensates for the inter-symbol interference. The other scheme to improve the channel quality is the diversity. Diversity means you have the multiple paths to uh, send the same data and it improves, improves the chance of receiving the data. So it compensates for the channel fading, right? And the last one is the channel coding. What does it uh, uh, do to improve the channel quality? It detects or corrects the errors. So we will just focus on equalization in this chapter. These techniques can be deployed independently or jointly. It means that uh, these three schemes uh, can be either uh, deployed in one system uh, can be deployed together in a wire one system or they they can be deployed separately in a system so this is uh, 
the representation of our transmitted signal. This is one example to show how the data is transmitted and passed to the channel and then how the received signal looks like those. So first of all, this is our transmitted signal, which is S of T. This we need to transmit from the transmitter to the receiver. And the channel model, it means how our channel looks like. This is our channel from which our data will pass. For example, this is a channel is a medium. So this is CH is our channel, right? And this is your input data, which is ST, S of T. And this is H of T. And after passing through this channel, we will receive R of T, which is called the received data. So as you know that to find the received signal, we need to perform a convolution. So received signal is the ST convolved with H of T. So here S of T, this is our S of T, the blue signal, blue data we need to transmit in the time slot ES, which is the given time slot for the data which we need to transmit. And this is our channel, H of T. Uh, what does it mean? This is channel which is spread out on the, and uh, every path, there are four paths, for example, here, one, two, three, and four. This is the channel. So there are four different multipaths, you can say there are four multipaths in the one channel from which your data is transmitting. So this is your data and this is passing through this channel. So um, when you convolve, you will get this type of response. For example, alpha one will be multiplied by this one. So we will get same response here and alpha two in the opposite direction. So here, but it will follow the amplitude alpha two. So it's amplitude is little bit less as compared to this one. And then alpha three and it will follow the amplitude of alpha three and then alpha four same here. So this is our received signal when passes through the uh, channel HFT. So equalization. Now we will go move towards the main topic. So if the modulation, uh, why we need uh, the equalization or when we need the equalization. If the modulation bandwidth, it means the bandwidth on which you are transmitting the data exceeds the coherence bandwidth. So coherence bandwidth you studied in the previous lecture, the coherence bandwidth is the bandwidth uh, in which the channels remain constant or you can say it's the channel remains the flat. So there will be less effect of the or the minimum effect of the channel on your data. So if the modulation bandwidth, it means that your the data, uh, your data bandwidth is uh, exceeds the coherence bandwidth of the radio channel, then ISI occurs and it means I inter symbol interference occur and modulation pulses are spread in the time. So your data will be spread in time. So to overcome this effect, we need equalization. So equalization compensates for inter-symbol interference created by multipath within time dispersive channel. What is time dispersive channel? As I already explained, your channel is dispersed in time, like there are multiple paths in a one channel. So in equalizer, within a receiver. Where does it lie? Equalizer lies in the receiver, compensates for the average range of the expected channel amplitude and delay characteristics. So equalizer will compensate the channel amplitude and the delay characteristics. It will try to overcome the effect of uh, the channel and try to minimize the effect of channel and to receive the correct data. So equalizer there uh, to better perform it means if the, uh, to improve the performance of the equalizers, equalizers must be adapted. What does adapted mean? It means that since the channel is generally unknown and time varying, so equalizers must have a capacity or capability to adopt the time varying channel or the unknown conditions of the channel, right? So what are the fundamentals of equalization? Intersymbol interference, how it results or how it occurs caused by multipath propagation, time dispersion, and 
causes bit errors at the receiver. The major obstacle to high speed data transmission over mobile radio channels. So these are some requirements you can say that for the equalization. Equalization a technique is used to combat ISI can be any signal processing operation that minimizes ISI usually track the varying channel adopted. So we move further on using discrete now let's uh, pictorially see what happens if we will equalize the channel. For example as we already explained that RK is your receive signal and this is your transmitter signal and CK is the channel response or channel response of your uh, multipath channel and this is the added noise in the system. So this is your data and it passes to the channel and noise is added in the receiver side. So the receive signal will look at this or look like this. So the multipath channel causes frequency selectivity and intersymbol interference. So due to multipath channel there are two problems. The one is called the frequency selectivity and it results in ISI as well. So equalization can reduce the intersymbol interference and noise effects for better demodulation. So equalization plays the important role. So let's see how it works, how the equalizer works and what is the uh, benefits of using the equalizer. For example, this is the, the solid line is your original channel like the multipath channel. You can see since it is going like this one. So what will happen uh, to overcome the effect of this channel? What we will do? We need to produce the opposite of the channel, generate the opposite response as to the channel, so the dotted one, right? I am following this one. So this is the equalizer response. So to cancel the response of the channel, this is your original channel, we need to generate the opposite response to this channel. So what will happen? Here, this will cancel out, this will cancel out, this is so, but we have a straight line, right? It means that we have equalized, it means the channel is overcome, channel response is overcome, and we have equalized the channel. So, in this way, the data will not be corrupted. So, this is the role of the equalizer. So, in a Wireless environment, for example, we, if we have a one direct path and one multipath, how the receive signal will look like? So this is called our direct path is as SK data, and B1 is the amplitude. Okay, right? And this K minus one means after some time delay, like uh, K minus one, one path which is delayed for some time, and we will receive a data plus so there are two parts one and two the channel response is thus in this case we have a as we have a two parts so we have a two parts for the channel as one so here b1 is the channel response amplitude and delta k is the position because it is impulse and similarly delta k minus <coughs> one is also impulse and it is delayed by one second or generally you can say it's delayed. So there are two parts for the channel as well. Okay, let's move to the classifications of equalizers. Equalizers are usually divided into three major types. One is called the linear and other is the adaptive and third one is the non-linear equalizers. So what is linear equalizers? In linear equalizer, there is no feedback path to adopt the equalizer. It means that there is no feedback from the user to the from the receiver to the base station to change the uh, to update the equalizer in order to uh, train itself according to the varying channel condition. And the equalizer is linear as well. So there are two further types in linear equalizers. One is the zero forcing and the other is the minimum mean square error equalizer. So we will focus on these two. There can be other equalizers as well. Adopted equalizers, these are the equalizers which adopt by based on the 
channel conditions it means they update the equalizer coefficients according to the channel conditions the last one is the nonlinear equalizer in this equalizer there is a feedback to change the subsequent outputs of the equalizers the equalization is nonlinear and one of the example is decision feedback equalizer we will not cover this equalizer in this course so what are the linear equalizer as i told you earlier the output of the decision maker is not used in the feedback path to adopt the equalizer it means we don't have any feedback path to update the equalizer coefficients according to the channel condition so a linear equalizer is a filter that can undo the channel effect so this is if this is a linear equalizer so what will it do it is, it is your received data rk here and when it passes to the equalizer it must only give you the sk right the transmitted data which we call sk hat sk metadata. data this was the input data xk it passes to the channel this is your channel and then noise is added and in the end you receive rk receive signal but receive signal has the effect of channel so in order to remove this effect of the channel we, what we do we perform equalization so equalization has a coefficient which we denoted here as a gk so which should be the uh, which should be like that it must cancel the effect of ck your channel effect it should be inverse of ck in order to con cancel out the effect of ck as we already seen in the last slides so if we uh, generate gk as opposite to the ck then it will give you the original data symbol which is our target but we put head because it is called estimated signal so ideally the output of an equalizer is a delayed version of the transmitted signal it can be understand easily because as you know that it will passes from transmitter to the receiver so it must have some delay so it is called a delayed version of the transmitted signal so it is have some delay version of the transmitted signal for example k minus k naught here this k naught can be any delay we will discuss this later on as well a fixed equalizers measures the time invariant channel time invariant means it is not varying with channel and it is called fixed because it is not adoptive as the channel changes so a fixed equalizer measures the time invariant channel it measures the time invariant channel and compensates the frequency selectivity during the entire transmission of data so it will measure the frequency selectivity the frequency selectivity means that how much channel changes with respect to uh, each frequency like with respect to the bandwidth so an adaptive equalizer adjusts its coefficients to track slowly time varying channel so whereas uh, the difference between the fixed and the adaptive is that fixed just compensates the frequency selectivity during the entire transmission of data and here the channel is time invariant <clears throat> whereas in adaptive equalizers it adjusts the coefficients to track slowly time varying channel so here the channel is time varying <clears throat> so mathematically uh, the output of an n-tap equalizer first of all we need to understand what are the n-taps as i told you that if you are you have a two multipass for example this is your transmitter as i already plotted previous slide this is one path this is second path if you have a two paths two multipass then you need a two tap equalizer to cancel the effect of this two path and if you have a n multipass for example this one dot 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 n n then you need n tap equalizers to cancel out the effect of this n multipass so actually the uh, equalizers are the filters in a other sense equalizers are the filters so each filter will generate the coefficients which are opposite to the this path right each path okay let's move on mathematically the n tap equalizer so these are the equalizers 
कोफिशन जी नॉट के जी वन के अप टू जी एन के इज गिवन बाय सो दिस इज यूर रिसीव डेटा आफ्टर पासिंग टू द इक्वलाइजर एज आई शोन यू दिन द प्रीवियस स्लाइड सो एस हैट के माइनस के नाट हैट मीन्स द एस्टिमेटेड नॉट द ओरिजिनल वन इज द एस्टिमेटेड वन एंड एन इज इक्वल वेरीज फ्रॉम जीरो टू एन एज आई टोल्ड यू देर इज द नंबर ऑफ पास एन पास एंड जी एन के इज द कोफिशेंट्स विच आर द इक्वलाइजर्स कोफिशेंट नॉट द चैनल कोफिशेंट एंड आर के माइनस एन इज यूर रिसीव डेटा राइट सो दीज आर मल्टीप्लाइंग विद ईच अदर टू जनरेट द रिसीव डेटा Where R K is the receive signal and K not K introduces a delay in the causal system. As I told you, um, when it passes, when the data passes from transmitter to the receiver, it must have a some delay. So this is a constant delay in the system. For a fixed equalizer, as we discussed, there are two types of equalizer: fixed and adapted. For fixed equalizer, G N K is equal to G N. That is, its coefficients don't change with time K. As the coefficient k is here, the time. So, if the coefficients of the equalizers are not changing, are not varying with time, then we can just write g n. G n can be g one, g two, and so on. So, if it is varying with time, then we can say that g one at the first second, or g two at the first times. Slot or the second time slot and so on. So it can be there can be multiple then G1 second time slot G2 that means the second coefficient in the second time slot and up to for example G n and the k time slot. So this portion represents the time, right? So if there is, it's not varying with time, then it means that we are just seeing at one time instant. So don't need to put that k. So change with. For adaptive equalizer, we have a j and k is updated periodically based on the current channel characteristic. It means that we will see that in, for example, time one second, we have a different characteristic because it is varying, channel is varying, and time period two would have a different characteristics. Because channel is varying and nth, so we need uh, for each time varying we need the different coefficients. So it is updated periodically. The equalizer coefficients can be determined from the channel response. It's uh, understandable because this g and k we need to generate these coefficients as opposite to the our channel response g k which we discussed earlier. So these two should be opposite. So we need to Uh, determined from the channel response. The training sequence or the data sequence directly. We will discuss it. What does it mean? Training sequence and data sequence in the next slide. So, uh, as I discussed, there are two main types in the linear equalizer. One is the zero forcing, and other is MMMC. So, zero forcing in zero forcing equalization. This is very simple equalizer. It means that the equalizer coefficient g k attempts to completely inverse the channel. By forcing g c k into g k in equal to one. For example, if uh, there is any value, for example, this is two, and we need to cancel out this two, then we need to generate g k inverse of this two. For example, this is two, so it should be two by one by two to cancel out, right? So it becomes equal to one. so this is simple concept of the zero force equalizer it means that if your data is passing through the ck this is channel then we need to generate the inverse of the channel which is gk so it means the channel coefficients for example there are two parts there will be two coefficients we need a two tap equalizer which should have the two coefficients but each coefficient should be opposite of the other coefficient i give have given one example for example this is two and we need One by two to cancel it out to make it one. So it means that we have exactly cancel out the effect of the channel. So in the end we will have a one, right? Impulse means one, and it has a some delay 
because it passes through the channel and if there will be some delay so this just represents the delay k minus k naught so this is for example sk you passes to ck and here you would have a rk so rk into gk should be your sk right so when would be when would it be a sk when it will be exactly cancel c g k and would be inverse of the c k so this is the only point here but there is this that's advantages of using zero forcing equalizers what are the major disadvantages we will highlight it here so zero forcing equalizer has the capacity that it removes all isi but and is ideal when the channel is noiseless so if there is no noise this nk part there is no noise then it is the best equalizer zero forcing because it removes completely remove the isi but when there is a noise this part is available then what would happen let's see however when the channel is noisy the zero forcing equalizer will amplify the noise greatly at frequency f where the channel response has a small magnitude that is near zeros of the channel in the attempt to invert the channel completely what does it mean for example if you have a noise here as well as it's the in practical system there would be always a noise in a system so when uh, the channel is noisy zero will amplify the noise greatly at the frequency as this is going to inverse right gk would be the inverse of the ck so in the seed signal when it passes to the gk what would it do it will directly inverse it right but what would happen uh, it will amplify the noise greatly at the frequencies f where the channel response has a small magnitude right for example channel response is near to zero right if you will inverse to the zero then what would happen it will generate infinite right so when you have a very less frequency like the channel response in the terms of frequency i'm talking about has a noise greatly at frequency where the channel response has a small magnitude you have a channel response has a small magnitude near zeros in the attempt to invert the channel completely so channel response is has a very low amplitude so due to this if you will take the inverse then it will result in infinity so in turns it means that it will enhance the noise it will do what will it do it will enhance the noise so in summary you can say that zero forcing is the best option when there is no noise but in the case when there is a noise in the system which is uh, always there it is not its performance is worst because it will cancel out the isi but it will enhance very much enhance the noise so this will result in a worst performance so let's move on how to overcome this situation so there is a mmsc minimum mean square error equalizer so in this equalizer the noise enhancement problem is overcome so how it works let's move to the working procedure of the mmsc equalizer here the filter tabs filter tabs as i told you uh, the equalizer has a number of tabs and and the these number of tabs depends on the number of multipass so we to that tabs we called as the filter tabs so filter tabs are adjusted such that the mean square error of isi and noise power at the equalizer output is minimized so what does it mean it means that to adjust the filter coefficients so we need to adjust the filter coefficient gn so the the following equation is minimized we need to uh, what is what does it mean i wrote it here ak you can say it's similar like sk and sk hat so sk hat is our the receive signal is the estimated signal and it is was the original signal so if there is a difference between the receive signal and the original uh, receive signal and the original signal then this would be the error so if we matches this to like s k is equal to s hat k then what would happen for example 1 minus 1 it would be 0 so there will be no difference right 
so we need to minimize the scale of these two differences so it means that if we minimize this for example near to zero it means that the receive signal and the transmitted data is similar so in this sense we will minimize the error or in other sense it's the the coefficients g k or the g n which results in minimizing these function right is the best coefficient so we need to utilize that coefficient so it means that it is updating the coefficients by time till we have a best minimum result of the error shows that to have a minimize the mean square difference between the known and the estimated data should be minimized so in this way uh, we would have a better performance as compared to the previous zero forcing equalizer adaptive equalizer as its name suggests uh, it will adapt to the uh, channel condition so there are two modes to start with this adaptive mode equalizer one is called training mode and the other is called the tracking mode so what is the training mode training mode means you need to train the adaptive equalizers first uh, because without training how your equalizer can be adjusted or work properly so we need to send the known sequences and thus we can know the channel for example you have to send uh, if you uh send the data which is known to you and at the receiver side so at the receiver side based on that if you send for example one and you have received point one right so at receiver you know that you have transmitted one but you received point five so you need to adjust the channel coefficients or uh, we can see the filter coefficients or equalizer coefficient till we have we transmitted one and we received one so it means that we trained our system eco, uh, coefficients equalizer coefficient that our the difference between transmitted and the received is minimal right so this is the training mode we need to send the known sequences as, and thus we can know the channel as we know the transmitted data one is transmitted and at the receiver we have a 0.5 so we know the difference so we will first send the data known data and receiver we know the data as well and compare and this is called training mode so in fixed length of training sequence are sent immediately data bit is sent after the training sequence so when this training is done we will send the data which we need to transmit the training sequence is desired to permit an equalizer at receiver to acquire the proper filter coefficients in worst possible channel condition as i told you first of all we will send the training sequences to adopt the channel condition because we in this way we know the channel condition and we will cancel out that channel when the, our um, equalizer is trained then we will transmit the data an adaptive equalizer at the receiver uses recursive algorithm recursive means it will repeat uh, uh, this is a one kind of repeated repeated algorithm that will update the coefficients till we have a no error to evaluate the channel and estimate filter coefficients to compensate the channel then there is a tracking mode as user data are received the adaptive algorithm of the equalizer tracks the changing channel and adjusts its filter for channel coefficient filter characteristics over time so it will just track uh, continuously track to update its filter as well when the uh, data is received so it is called adaptive algorithm due to this commonly used in digital communication system these types of adaptive are used in this is where user data is segmented into a short time blocks right. so let's uh, see mathematically how it looks like how it works so when the channel is linear time varying right it means that the channel is changing it is necessary to update the equalizer coefficients in order to track the channel changes as i told you when channel changes we need to update the equalizer coefficient these are the equalizer coefficient to overcome the effect of the channel coefficient which are the ck right so let's start define the input signal to the equalizer uh, what would be the input signal to the equalizer which would be in our case will be the receive signal 
So receive signal, how we get receive signal? RK is the convolution of ST, our transmitted data, into uh, the convolution of, what we say, our CK, right? So RK is the product or the convolution of ST into CK. So this is our received signal, but this received signal would be input to the equalizer. And this is our equalizer, which has the coefficients g, k. And in adaptive equalizers, what we are doing, we are going to update these coefficients to minimize or to cancel the effect of the channel. So R k is, uh, this is a vector. So there are number of elements inside. RK, RK minus 1. RK means the first arrived data from the first multipath, and RK minus 1 is the first delayed arrived data at the due to first multipath, which is due to second multipath, which is due to the n multipath, because on, the first one will arrive earlier and the other later or later will be delayed with some time. So we have a n channel. If we have a n path, then we have a and receive signals, right? And transpose to ever just for a representation. And an equalizer weight vector, this is our equalizer, where GK is G naught K, G1 K, G2 K, G N K. As I already explained, this K is for a different time slots, right? So these are for each time instant, these are the equalizer. For example, G01, G11, G21, Gn1 for the first time instant and the G02, G12, so on for the second time instant and etc. So we have as the output what would we have? X k minus k naught is equal to that means the estimated R k into G k like this R k passes to gk so we would have a estimated so what would be the error uh, error will be the difference of the received this is our received and the transmitted signal so this was the original transmitted signal and this is the received signal so if we will calculate the difference if we put the value of k minus s hat k minus k naught which is r k hat minus s k gk so we will we will easily obtain the error. So let's see what's next. So this is the uh, adaptive equalizer, right? Adaptive channel equalizer. This is a structure. Let's explain this one. So um, these are the filter tabs, right? This is the delay elements, delay, delay. So this is your receive signal RK. In the vector you have seen that there are n uh, received uh, signal from the n path. So this is RK when passes to D, it will be delayed, for example, RK minus 1, then RK minus 1 will be delayed, and it will be RK minus 2, and they delayed till RK minus n, right? So these are our received signal. So what we, we mm, do here, we need to multiply this with the channel coefficient. So these are the channel coefficient G0, G1, and G2. For each path, there will be a channel coefficient. So there is G1 and G2, so on, up to Gn. So when we receive the data here, then it will pass to a summer, and then uh, what would happen? For example, uh, RK into GK passes to the summer. Uh, what would happen? We will receive the SK minus K naught hat. This is the, our output. As I told you in the previous slides, there will be RK into G. So we will receive SK minus K naught. And there will be, then we will find the difference between them. XK is the original. Pilots are the decision which with the known data is called the pilots are the decision feedback. So we will find the difference. The difference would be the error, right? The error will be given to the algorithm which is adapted that updates the weight coefficient. So it means that if error is 
for example error will be the difference for example difference is 0.5 so it means that it doesn't matter matches the input signal so it will give this feedback to the algorithm in the, the algorithm what will the algorithm do it will update the coefficients each coefficients this and up to gn so that it should cancel completely cancel out this one so this process will continue till we will get the zero error right so in most cases training sequence is inserted periodically during data transmission this particular set of symbols are therefore known to the receiver and this can be used to train the equalizer that is up to this coefficient there are number of adaptive algorithms that are used to up, uh, update this coefficients but here uh, the least mean scale algorithms uh, is used that carries out the mean scale error by the recursively updating the coefficient so this will update the coefficient based on this error that is if the uh, how we will judge that uh, this is improving the performance improving or not so if the mean scale error gradient is positive uh, then it implies that error would keep increasing positively if the same weight is used for further iteration so we will check the mean scale error gradient gradient means the uh, derivative you can say then what will it do it will if it is giving us the positive result then it means that if we will use the same weight uh, in further iteration it will uh, keep increasing the error so which means we need to reduce the weights so we will decrease the weights of the channel uh, the filter coefficient in the same way if the gradient is negative we need to increase the weights and here we need to decrease and here we need to increase so the least mean scale algorithm carries out the mean scale error by recursively updating the coefficient using the following rule. So this is the rule to update. This is our estimated symbols R K into G K. So error is S K minus K naught into difference. And this is the update rule of the G K plus one. This is, for example, if you have a channel coefficient G K, and in the next time, based on this error signal, you would like to update. The coefficients so this will be called a gk plus one it means next time slot the gk will be updated and alpha here is a, a control parameter step parameter that controls the adaptation rate it means that uh, usually it lies between zero to one if you will select it accurately then the this will give us quickly give us the better result like the desired result otherwise it will move it will take a lot of time and this usually the value of this alpha is uh, also chosen by some algorithm and must be chosen carefully to guarantee convergence it means it will converge quickly the equalizer is converged if the error becomes steady so it means that if uh, uh, what coefficients are the desired coefficient of the gk plus one uh, when we have a steady error it means the error is not changing anymore so to get the details of the derivation of gk plus 1 this detail how this equation comes like it's derived you need to check the derivation on the following page this is wikipedia page where you can see that how this equation is derived by using which we are updating the coefficient i would like to thank you for listening this lecture and for question answer there will be a separate session that the date and the time of the session will be communicated later on Thank you.